So as a child um, here in the States, I see, you know, young people, the, they give their kids options that, you know, you don't have to go the way I go, you know. So did you have uh, any other, or was this is the way we do this? Because that's what I admire about a lot of people from your country. It's like, you don't give them ABC and all of the above, but you pick one. So did you even have a choice not to believe what your family believed or you just saw how it worked? How did that, because I see folks giving people so many choices now. Yeah, we don't re we, we didn't really have any choice. You know, as long as your family is Christian, you are automatically, you automatically become a Christian. You follow those family traditions. They will tell you, this is what our family believes in. This is what we stand for. And you have to follow. But then at the end of the day, growing up, you know, some people will find other paths. Some people will decide to follow a different path. But we usually follow the principles that were given to us. It's more like it's handed over to you from generation to generation. It's passed down. It's like passing the baton in a relay race. It's been passed onto us, you know, from generation to generation. And we have continued that same trend where we're passing that same uh, baton to our kids or cousins or nephews or nieces and whoever's related to us and family will pass on that baton to them to take over from that ministry. It's not like here in the U.S., you know, coming around and people just believe in what they believe in. Um, they tell you here in the West that you can do whatever you want. For us, it's not like that. Um, we do not have the choice. We would just be, we were told this is what our grandfathers or forefathers believed in. And this is what the gospel that was handed over to them is the same gospel that is handed over to us. And we followed from there. Uh, that's rich. That's so encouraging because um, Joel 1 and 3 was given to me about telling you maybe just eight years ago. So over here, that's not a automatic. And that's so encouraging watching Pastor Amos, and I have some brothers over, some siblings in Nigeria, taking mm -hmm. the Bible literally, and it's blowing my mind. I'm loving it. Yeah. But it's like, no, you don't have a choice. You tell the next generation. That. And and it's proven to be, boy, you better run and tell it. That's rich. Yeah. That's rich. Indeed. Indeed. So answer me, when I first talked to you on the phone, you say you go everywhere to do mission work and i'm trying to send you back to your country with just being here for a little bit and you said yeah. no you get to go so how did that come about that you had the desire in essence to take the word literal go therefore but how did that even happen and then i tried to look up from the facebook you a missionology a mission something i don't know what the word is Theology. yeah yeah and yeah. so how did that come about yeah, so I have a degree in, uh, I have a Master of Theology in Missiology. I actually went to South Korea in 2011, and I studied in uh, the Presbyterian University and Theological Seminary in Seoul, South Korea. And I was there for two years. I had my master's degree from that school studying miss missiology, which is actually the studies of mission. Uh, it gives you a background of what mission activity, what God's mission is the Missio Dei of God and what his mission to man and humanity is and also gives you the opportunity of how to reach other people group uh, in different parts of the world. So I was equipped with that master's degree and that gave me an edge to be able to know how to reach out to people of different religious, religious backgrounds and different uh, ethnicity and all that kind of stuff. And it, it really trained me to, uh, with that degree, to be able to do that. So I went back home upon graduation and I worked with the local Baptist churches and some of the evangelical churches in Nigeria and also helped plant churches back home in Nigeria. And then I moved to the U.S. Um, then I came to Baylor University. The goal was to do a Ph.D., but then I had to do some prerequisite classes at Baylor and do another master's that gave me an edge to apply for a doctorate program. And that was how I found myself uh, at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. So um, that, that gave me an opportunity to be able to understand what God's mission is. And, and it's ultimately in that great commission where it said in Matthew 28, it said, go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I am with you even up to, up to the, the age, you know. So God is, that's the mandate that God has given to us, to make disciples of all nations, of all shape and form. Uh, however you find them, wherever you find them in life, make those disciples and just draw them closer to God 
and let them have relationship with God. Just serve people. So that's that's the heart for me. I go back home once every year or two times a year. Um, I went I went to Nigeria last year twice, and um, reaching out, we actually dug a well for our community. That is service. It's a mission service to our community. We also were able to. We just started a center. We're building a center where. We will train worship leaders, empower widows, and also raise orphans and teach them how to be independent on their own and be economically liberal, uh, liberated from all the things that, you know, God has helped them to be able to establish themselves. Um, so we want to see how we can liberate people from poverty and help them to grow in in, in the richness of uh, all that God has blessed them with. So that's that's ultimately the mission that we have. And we're doing that through the ministry we call the Shabak Beyond Center in Nigeria. And that's the ministry that God has given to us. God, I love it, man. Man of God, you you taking God's word literal and he's just opening the <laughs> doors. Amen. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Amen. So yeah. when you, I'm not going to hold you, I promise, because I could tell. But anyway, when you go to these different places, is there a host church that receive you or you just kind of go where you go? No, we do have host churches that we partner with um, because that's one thing that we have tried over the years to establish ourselves. We look for local churches in those areas and we partner with them. They actually go ahead and find those people in need for us. And we have friends all over the city that we have done ministry with and we trust. They also help us find those widows. Like over Christmas, we bought, we did a benevolence for widows. We gave food items to a lot of widows. Um, food items like rice, spaghetti, cornmeal, um, you know, spices. We gave every widow a full chicken. It's it's something we have done over time. We That's one thing that God has called us to do. So we empower these people because they are very weak and feeble. They don't really have the resources. Most of them have lost their husbands. Some of them are not working. There's a lot of poverty and suffering in those, in those areas. So we have done as, uh, as much as we can. But the little resources that we raise from here in the U.S., we just distribute those funds and buy all those food items and help those who are in need. Helping students who don't really have the opportunity to go to school, we have picked a few orphans that we're going to be supporting. Uh, so far, we have partnered with local churches to see how they can bring out those kids for us, and then we partner with them to see how we can pay their fees to go to school. So educating these young people and helping them establish themselves in life and uh that's one thing that we have done over this past few years. Man of God, you are just blowing my mind. You have not said I one time. We're doing this and we, 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 we. And that's a blessing to hear. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Not me alone. It's not me. It's we. It's a team. <laughs> yeah, but to acknowledge that is encouraging that uh, there's no I syndromes. To God be the glory. You could yeah. really meet people in person that you could strive to be like there's a cloud of witness in the Bible, of course. But when you get a cloud of witness in one of these little rectangle boxes or in person, it's encouraging knowing he's no respect of person. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you. I got two questions, but you yeah. can share anything. One, if if you could write your legacy, what would it be? Or how would you want to be remembered when the Lord takes you home, what would you want when they say, you know, Dr. Brother Jerry, let me take what, how, how does it, what's just however. Jerry, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I I care less about titles. If, if you talk to Amos, he would tell you about that. I do not even care about titles at all. Um, I want people to think about. Just wanted you to check out what I saw on YouTube. This is my brother, Jerry. My God, my God, this mighty man of God is blessing the Lord and song and so much more out there. But check him out and support him. All right now. Okay. Jesus Christ. 